Welcome back to Category 5 Technology TV. Tonight we are talking cryptocurrency. We're learning. We're getting there. I know. Are you ready to install our first yes. ever miner? So easy. Now we're doing this on Linux tonight. Okay. I'm going to head on over to cat5.tv slash miners. It's as simple as that. That's yep. going to take you to our GitHub page for Cat5 TV miners. Now, it's pretty straightforward. And you start looking and you're like, hey, this looks like a whole lot of code. And I don't know how to work that. Uh, all you need to do, and I, I'm sorry if that's exactly how you sound. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I sound. Uh, you scroll down a little ways. It's going to tell you a little bit about how this works. It's going to explain some things. And I want to explain some things. Well, CPU versus GPU. Yes. That's the first thing that I explain here on this entry, Cat5, dot, uh, Cat5 TV miners. The CPU, the central processing unit of your computer, is capable of mining cryptocurrency. Yep. Not Bitcoin, because as we mentioned earlier, it's just out of reach for uh, our consumer hardware. Mm -hmm. But things like Monero and things like, uh, like TurtleCoin now, um, we've got the capability to mine that with CPU. GPU, a graphics processing unit, this is your video card. If you've got a really good one, Sasha, you've got a really good one, so we're expecting good things out of that. Uh, I think it was a 1070, uh, GTX 1070. So it's going to do pretty well uh, with four gigs or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, overclocked at that. So your g graphics card has uh, so many cores and so much power to it that you can usually get a really good hash rate. Now, I picked up a $200 graphics card and I get about 350 hashes per second. Okay. So that's enough just from that one video card to generate revenue for me just by mining on that GPU. So CPU versus GPU, your GPU, if it's a good one, is going to give you a better hash rate than uh, a standard CPU. But something like a Xeon will get a killer uh, right. CPU rate, uh, hash rate. Um, so it really boils down to trying it. Try the CPU um, miner and see what kind of hash rate you get. Try a GPU miner and see what kind of hash rate you're going to get. Um, and what's interesting about it, because they're two different chips, CPU versus GPU, you can run both simultaneously. Yes. So to maximize your hash rate, which is to say to maximize how much uh, of these crypto hashes your computer is able to handle uh, and and decode and figure out and send back to the server, the higher your hash rate, the better you, the, the more revenue you're generating, essentially. And, and when you uh, put me onto the software the other day, yes. uh, I downloaded both. Yep. I had both of them running. And it was interesting for me to see because I thought I had a great graphics card. Mm. I couldn't tell you what it is because I don't recall now. It's been, sure. you know, uh, a couple years. years old. It might just yeah, it is it a might be years. a great graphics card, but it may just not have crypto mining right. capabilities. And so <clears> when <throat> I had the GPU running, I think I was getting about 170 hashes. Uh, on GPU? Yeah. On, well, that's not on bad. GPU. That's, yeah, it was good. That's really good. I flipped to the CPU and I'm pulling out a consistent 298. What? And I was like... On a CPU? On a CPU. Wow. And I was like, okay, so I like getting, this. So you're getting like 400 hashes per second on this rig. Just something like, yeah, it was about those. that, yeah. So is it an NVIDIA or an AMD card? I believe it was an AMD. Okay, so as it's an been AMD two years card, since I built it. As an AMD card, you can actually install their blockchain driver. I and did the not block, know that. The blockchain driver apparently gives you better hash rates. All so right. it's just a different alternate driver because you're on Windows. Yes. Now, I, I also have that installed on my Linux machine. Yes. Because the card I bought was an AMD card because apparently they're, uh, they mine more hashes per second than N NVIDIA, apparently. I did so, know that. Yeah, I, I, that's just what I've heard. I haven't put them head to head cool. yet. We're going to see on Sasha's rate because she's got an NVIDIA 1070. Yes. Uh, so GPU versus CPU, it really comes down to start with CPU because it's easier to get up and going. Yes. GPU can be a little more complex. Um, but if you can get them both working together, then you're going to get the best hash rate possible from, yep. from your computer. And again, we're not building computers. We are simply using the hardware that we already have. Mm -hmm. So there's no uh, perceptible cost involved. We're just installing a program and letting it run. Yep. So... On this site, you can learn more about it. How much bandwidth is it going to use? Basically none. It's not an internet thing. It's a CPU, GPU thing. You'll notice that there are several options. The automatic miner is the one we're going to focus on tonight. There's also specifically Monero mining. 
uh, turtle, turtle coin mining and Bitcoin CPU mining, which is really just proof of concept, but probably don't run it because it's not actually going to generate any, any revenue. So automatic miner for Linux. Uh, what's cool about our automatic miner is that it automatically cycles between the different currencies. So it'll do uh, a time of uh, Monero, mm -hmm. and then it will stop that, and it will do a time for turtle coin. Oh. And it will rotate between them so that we're kind of maximizing the portfolio in right. that we're getting a little bit of coin from each. So that if it's Monero that takes off, we're good. If it's Turtle Coin that takes off, then we're, we're good as well. Hmm. Uh, but we're not investing our hashing, our mining on either uh, uh, on one currency. Right. It rotates. So that's where the auto miner comes in. And that is currently available for Linux, but also uh, uh, will be available for Windows as well. So on Linux, I'm just going to copy this line. It's, I've made it as simple as I possibly can to, to get up and running. Uh, so jump into your terminal. So we're going to actually see in real time how hard it is to get a crypto mining application running on your computer. Here we go. Paste. Enter your password. And now let her go. So it updates uh, apt repositories because it's added a couple um, that are needed. It's mm -hmm. going to install dependencies. These are applications that are required in order to mine. So even if you don't want to use our software, it's prepared your system now to mine. So yes. it's installed all the dependencies that you will need in order to set up XM Rig, for example. Um, so you can see it's getting some, okay, it's getting some headers. Now it's got the thing, the, the application, and it's compiling it already. So it's currently compiling what's called Monero-CPU, uh, which is the Monero miner to use the CPU, and that's what I'm installing. Um, automatic miner is currently only CPU. A GPU version will be coming out as well. Keep in mind the information that I've already provided. Now it's moved on to uh, installing turtle coin mining on the CPU. Again, it's going to rotate between them. Um, or you can, if you decide, you can just use one or the other. Right. If you want to set up a particular uh, wallet and get up and going and start mining for yourself, you can use the Cat5 TV miners software to mine for yourself as yes. well. By default, see, here's what's unique about Cat5 TV miners. When you install it and, and start mining, it will be mining to our wallet, which is a way of supporting Category 5 TV. So any cryptocurrency that's mined with the software out of the box is going to go into the wallet that supports Category 5. Now, as soon as you're ready, so it's a good way to get up and running and see if your computer is capable. Yes. Because right? you can run it and you don't have to set up a wallet and all that stuff. Once it's up and running, you can create your own wallets and change the wallet user it's called a username but you can change the wallet in the configuration file and boom you're mining to your own wallet right so um to kind of because this is an introduction to crypto mining just so you're aware there's a, there's a little bit of an intricacy to the way that it works in that when i'm mining i'm not mining directly to my wallet i can do that that's called solo mining but when i do that i have to achieve the entire block myself right so where Rather than sending a bunch of hashes to a pool and then getting rewarded for my contribution, I'm having to get the entire block. It might take weeks and weeks, if at all. So you will see no income whatsoever from your mining efforts unless you get a block. And the chances of getting a block on your own are pretty rare. So instead, what we use is what's called a pool. So a pool is Jeff. Your computer is connecting into this server. Mm -hmm. Me, my computer is connecting into the server. Sasha, your computer is also connecting into this server, and it's called a pool. So now the power of all of our hash rates is working together and finding all the hashes and collecting them and then finding the blocks. And once we find a block, it divvies it out. Here's a bit for you, here's a bit for you, and here's a bit for me. So much, much quick, quicker, I start to see cryptocurrency showing up in my wallet and once i hit the threshold that's when it's expelled to my wallet right until then it's in the pool yeah so when you sign up for a pool you'll see things like uh 1000 coin threshold that means until you have mined a thousand coins you will not get it in your wallet right okay so with turtle um it starts at about 100 coins and so you probably be seeing two or three payments a day Oh wow! Uh, so it's okay. really, really good right now. Um, this is finished installing. So I just want to show you quickly um, how we can do this. So the, the commands are here. To begin mining, run this command. And so I'm just going to copy that and paste it into my terminal. 
And if all went well, there you go. It's mining turtle. Boom. Turtle mining on my laptop. And in, in fact, I'm in virtual box. So in a virtual machine, mining uh, cryptocurrency. Let's see what happens here. So I'm just waiting. So what's happened? It's connected to the pool. And it's looking for jobs. So it's got a job, but I have yet to complete that job. So my computer is essentially figuring out the hash. Right. The, the pool is saying, here's the problem. Here's the math problem. My computer saying, okay, I'm going to work this out. And then when I work it out, I send it to the pool. And it's all an automated process. You can see the pool has now sent me a second um, problem. And it's determined, you can see that the difficulty has gone down to 3,000. So it has determined automatically that, hey, my CPU running in VirtualBox is not really all that powerful on this laptop. Uh, I, I, I won. I had one accepted. There you go. So one of my hashes was found and accepted and is a good hash. There's another one. So I've now, both of those jobs that I was sent, my computer has figured out the hash, sent it back to the pool, and the pool continues to work. Now I start to see my hash rate. 67.8 hashes per second. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm getting on my laptop. So that gives me a bit of a gauge as to the performance in crypto mining on my laptop. Right. That gets us up and going. The command to stop mining, uh, you see here on the website, is to be run in a separate window. Don't just push control C because then when the timer goes, it's going to start up again with the next miner, right? So instead, open another terminal window. Terminal and then paste the stop, see, uh, the stop command, which I've got in my clipboard from the GitHub there. And you'll notice that it is now stopped. It sent a sig hub. And we're done. So now we've stopped mining. I can go about doing things. Now, while it's mining, I can still use my computer, mm -hmm. especially if you've got a decent computer. Like Jeff, obviously, yes. has Sasha, your computer. You could still be working on that computer and not even notice the difference because you've got enough cores and enough power that it's not going to affect you. GPU mining, on the other hand, because it really grabs a hold of that video card, you're probably going to have very low frame rates in games and stuff while yes. it's running. So you can kill off the GPU mining and just do CPU mining. Yep. Okay? Yep. And I did notice that. I mean, I... I was mining in the background uh, with my CPU and mm -hmm. didn't notice anything. Yeah, I use it all the time. It, it was great. Um, right. Just because, before we take a commercial break, Jeff, I know you're, you're eager to, to take a quick break. Um, because the question is going to arise, you'll notice that auto mine dash CPU is in the folder user share, uh, local share cat5. Uh, TV miners. So I'm just going to change directory to that and do an LS. And you see that there are SH files. So when I said you can change to your own coin, just do a nano turtle coin CPU and you'll see the username. Um, if you just kind of scroll over here, there you go, dash U. So see the username is my turtle address for category five. Just change that to your own. And then when you start um, your auto mining, it will be mining to your own. Uh, wallet instead. Right. Okay. I have a question from the chat room. Awesome. The foo wants to know whether or not or how does mining impact um, SSD lifetime? So solid state drive lifetime. Well, I don't know that there is much IO usage at all. Okay. Um, let's, let's give it a go. So what are you doing now? I am installing what's called I.O. Top, okay. which shows me um, the I.O. usage, the input-output, the data transmission and reception from my I.O. So I'll be able to tell if there's a lot of uh, usage. Great question. XM Rig. Okay, I saw it there. Oh. XM Rig is currently using 0%. It jumped up to a little bit, 99%. Now remember, I'm on a, um, I'm on a virtual machine, right? So my I/O is, you know, easy to max out. So do that on your system and see. Um, of course, that you can store it anywhere. I don't think that there's a real impact. I don't. I don't think there would be. I haven't heard it because it, what it does is it loads it into memory and it loads it on GPU. It actually uses the, the memory on the GPU itself. Mm -hmm. So that's why you can't mine, for example, uh, Monero on a one gig card right. because the hashes are like two gigs. Yeah. So 
and th those are not actual numbers, but that just to give you an idea, because your GPU, if you don't have a four gig card, you can't mine it because there's not enough memory in order to do it. Um, so that would be one thing I would check. So I see like the occasional 14 kilobyte write happening, but that's not much. No. So good question. Good question. Good question.